Okay, how about now? Um, yeah, I don't want your tea, Patsy. You can have your tea. Yuck. I hate tea. Okie dokie. Hi, guys. Hi, everyone. I'm finally here. It's been a crazy day. Crazy day. But I am so glad it's over with. This has been one hell of a day. I kid you not. Okay, I need to bring this down and go back. I'm bringing up my chat, guys, so I can see because I cannot read it that far away. I got got sound out here. Hey. Oh, hi. There. Okay, so hi, Lisa. Hi, Deborah. Hi, Karen. Hi, Clint. Hi, hi, Nan. Anyone else I missed? I am so glad today's over. Oh, thank you, Nan. So, bad news is, I went to the doctor, and he put me off work. And I was afraid that was going to happen, but I knew I, I, it was inevitable. Hi, Deborah. You guys are literally stuck with me probably for two, three months because there's some things I am seeing my doctor about. So we'll just leave it at that. <clears throat> Other than that, um, that's the good news is you guys are stuck with me. The bad news is I'm off work. I don't know how bad that is for you, but it's not great for me. <laughs> so, hi, Nancy. How are you guys? So, um, yeah. Anyway, it's a late day. I know I'm late. But again, I, I had so much, so much to do today. But I want to teach you guys, last night after I... I showed you guys this when I sat here with my sister last night till one in the morning, like crazily. Um, I made a couple of more of these fabric bowls, and these are just absolutely adorable. This one here, I'm just housing my blades with that. This one has all my pins that I use, so I'm keeping pins galore in here. So these are all different kinds and sizes of pins that I like. I like a variety of pins because I like to use them for a variety of different things. Yes, praying for me will be great. Uh, you're having Ruby withdrawals today. I know. I'm sorry. So, yeah, like these are what I'm calling organizers because I can keep... Like, I love, I love them. I really do. And today I tried a new bowl. This one here is a bowl cozy. Now, I tried a regular. I did the size they told me, 10 by 10. This does not fit my cereal bowls or my soup bowls. It's too small. So a 10 by 10 to me, this here is just going to be an organizer. And I'm going to sort it and give it to my sister Patsy because she likes these colors. It's actually upside down because the black is supposed to be on the outside. <laughs> Patsy switched that around, of course. I did. I know you did. <laughs> <laughs> she even admitted it. <laughs> I'm going to smash her face with an iron. But anyway, you can actually put these bowl cozies whatever way you want. But I'll show you how to make them. <coughs> if you prefer this method, then you can make them this way too. They're super cute too. I mean, you could put a hot small bowl in here, but you're not going to fit a regular cereal bowl or soup bowl. They're just too big. But they're so cute. Uh, those bowls are great. Thanks, Nancy. But I actually favor these ones the most. These are my absolute favorite bowls. This is the ones I'm going to teach you how to make these today too. But I'm also going to show you two methods. I'm going to show you how to do it with a sewing machine. And I'm going to show you, show you how to do it with just a hot glue gun. That way for people that don't have sewing machines, they can still make these. And they're still going to be gorgeous and beautiful and pretty because you're not going to see any of your glue. So that's what's fantastic about these. So let me just put my stuff aside. I love this metallic one. 
this one here is just so darling oh my goodness i love it look at this one it is darling and you can put whatever embellishment you want this one here i put my little uh ribbons on there with a little piece in the center so hey super cute i'm not gonna turn my glue gun on because you're gonna need that so let's get started and i'll show you what to do to make them and actually these you can make them whatever size you want <clears throat> I am making mine 10 by 10 squares. So these are all this size. These are all 10 by 10 inch squares. Hi. Hi. Sh hey, Jude. Hi, Jude. Nice to see you. <clears throat> so, uh-oh. I am zooming in and out and I can't stand that. I just saw it. Sorry, guys. Let me fix. I fix. Oopsies. I need to get rid of that auto focus crap shit uh, oh yeah oh no not not live no okay that should stop that now <clears throat> all right so i'm gonna put these little guys these little babies i do need these so i'll keep those and i'm just gonna set these off to the side look at that there's just so much stuff you can do and i love these on my little pull around tray i just sit them on there and that's the way i'm staying organized hey oh hey let's get organized right okay so what you're gonna start with and this is how many i'm making don't flip out i have 26 of these prepped and ready to go because i'm going to sell some i'm gonna make a bunch and i'm gonna post all the pictures of the colors of i got and let people buy them and I am going to sell them for $15 a piece. So I'm just saying, if you don't want to make one and you're lazy, you can buy one from me once I get these all whipped up. It's going to take me a bit, but I do have them all prepped. So for this, you're going to need um, two pieces of 10 by 10 squares. So it doesn't have to be a layer cake. You can just cut your own fabric. You can cut whatever fabric you want. Do you have room over there for yeah, this, sister? Well, almost. here, this is good right there. It's just, I can't read this yeah. iPad. It's too far away. Well, um, it. Hi, Rajul. Oh, thank you, Jude. So, anyway, you need two 10 by 10 squares, and you need a piece of 9.5 by 9.5 interfacing. So this is fusible lightweight interfacing. So it's it's it says it's lightweight, but it does give a good amount of structure to your project. So you're going to take your two 10 by 10 squares. You're going to match them up as best that you can. Don't have to be fretting over it. And you're going to pin them. I'm using clips because I don't use pins for this. So you're going to put a couple of pins on every side. So you're going to pin them right sides together. You see? That's the right side. That's the wrong side. So you're going to pin. Look at this beautiful fabric. I am not even kidding you. That is so pretty. So you're going to pin right sides together. Pattern to pattern? Yes. Always pattern to pattern. If you're using a batik, of course you're not going to be able to. It's going to be hard to tell your right side from your wrong sides. Like I, I had problems with that. So we're going to sew all the way around this square, but leaving a little opening. So I would say a good two inch opening is basically all you really need for that is two inches. So <clears throat> I'm going to take my little ruler here and I'm going to mark. You don't have to, but I'm going to mark a two inch opening just so I don't sew it. So I'm going to mark here. And here so I'm going to leave this part open because that's going to allow me to turn this inside right so there's my two inches it's good enough that's plenty full and let's get sewing all right now I need to move my clips 
Why are you making one, sister? Well, I want to kind of know because I might make the girls one for their. Uh... I'm using a quarter inch seam because that's all you need, and my fabrics are pretty much, uh, pretty much. <clears throat> I'm gonna zoom up a little because the next part I show you is gonna be pretty crucial and pretty critical. And it's the hardest part of the whole thing. And that's about as much as I can zoom with this thing. I don't know why. Damn it, piece of junk. Um, my thumb is sore. My thumb is very sore. But again, I'm living with it because that's just me. Nothing brings me down. I'm telling you, nothing. Okay, so let's sew a quarter inch around. I starting where I left my, see where my little blue mark is? You might not be able to see it because I can't get close enough. <clears throat> and actually, Jeff, do you have your electrical tape handy? The black tape? Wait, I, I think this green masking tape will work. Never mind, Jeff. You don't have to go looking for it. <clears throat> I have a really itchy throat. Where did I put my green tape? I have green masking tape somewhere. <clears throat> Can't find it. Patsy, give me it back. My sister took it after all my cleaning up. I cleaned my whole room again yes, last night. We just, me and Patsy, organized our stuff. You got it? Good. Because I can't find it. So what I'm going to do is just dull out that light on my sewing machine because it is super bright. And <clears throat> making it a little bit easier for you guys to see what I'm sewing. So let's black tape my light. There you go. It's gone. So now you can see. So let me bring this down. And down and maybe a wee bit closer how's that I need to be close because you guys need to see this next step after we sew this okay so I'm starting at my little blue line here purple or blue whatever color hi die die hey all right Believe me, my machine still works even though the light's covered. I can see just fine. So uh, you have to do a couple of back stitches. So sew it right till you become about a quarter of an inch away from the corner. Then you're going to pivot. Oh, look at that. I ran out of thread. So I didn't get much sewed. How do you like that? <laughs> An empty bobbin. <laughs> That was too funny. I'm just too funny. That's all right. I wound up a few bobbins last night while I was sitting in my craft room here. So we're good. We're good. There's lint in there. And it is now officially gone. Okay. So let's start again. Sorry. I had no idea I was out of bobbin. Okay. So let's go back to our markings, which were right here. So I'm going to start again. And I moved over a wee bit too much. There we go. <clears throat> so I'm uh, right now I'm showing you the sewed version. Okay, this is the sewed version, and then I'll show you the hot glue version. So sew to your corner, lift your foot, and pivot. And that's exactly a quarter of an inch. I can see from my pedal here, this is my quarter inch line here. My fabric is lined perfectly up with that. And it's always a good idea to make your, that's why I said nine and a half, because this is a 10 inch square, 
my my interfacing is nine and a half inches just to keep a little bit of bulk out of your seams that's basically what that's for and one more and i love these bowls like these are these are handy you can pick them up nothing falls out of them they're not flimsy because you were using the interfacing for stability in it okay so now i'm at the end here i'm going to sew to my other blue line and i'm going to backstitch and that's all there is to it so take that off and take that off you don't have to snip those threads but i just like to because i like to be proper now let's move this out of the way because this part is crucial i wish you guys could see better my lighting sucks balls but i hope you guys can see so now you're going to take this and you're going to snip your corners but don't cut your sewing line. Snip them. It just makes it a lot easier and your corners will be nice and nice and pointy like that. Now this is the only part, like this is the sewing part, so you're only going to have to do this to the sewed one. You, you won't be able to do this to the glued one. And you'll see why. Alright, so here's my little 2 inch opening. We're going to turn this inside out, inside right. So I just like to stick my thumb in here like this and start pulling out these corners. So take the corner, push it with my finger and push it out. Okay, so there's one. Stick my thumb back in there and do another corner. And it's going to get all wrinkly, of course. But push your corner out with your finger. Don't use a sharp tool to push those corners out. And I, I cringe when I see people using scissors to push. The, oh, here comes Miku. Jeff. Oh, he's fucking running in here. Oops. And I'm pushing out this corner. Ow, Miku. What are you doing, my boy? Jeez, you're a Hi. Hi. I'm trying to do a tutorial. No, 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 no. Back up, Barbie. I my heart pounding. You made Auntie Patsy scared. She's so scared of he you. He didn't walk in here. He ran. Oh, baby Miku. Say hello. Say hello. hello. Good birdie. Why do you have to be on the show all the time? Eh? Why? Hello. Hi. Why do you always have to be up here? Say hello. What are you doing? No, you're not going to start throwing shit off my table. What a pain in my butt. Okay. <laughs> Did you just run from the... <laughs> Did you just run? Did he scare you? Did he scare you? Is he going to steal you? What are you doing? He's bugging me. Okay, you can take him. Step up. Step up. Come on. You can do it. Go, birdie. Put him way up in the air. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Miku's got to be the star of the show. <gasps> Patsy's having a cardiac arrest here. <laughs> All right. <laughs> she just closed the door. <laughs> All right. Get up there. I'm going to make sure my iron's on because you definitely need your iron on. So I'm pushing out my last corner. All right. So now we have a nice wrinkled mess, but that's okay because it's going to get ironed. Where's my tool? So again, I have, I have a pokey tool that pokes out corners. This doesn't put any pressure on your seams. So it just just going to push it up there and there's no point on it because that's a rounded dull point. And I kind of like the corners to be as sharp 
as pointy as I can get them. Like that. Now, I like to take this and push it down, parch way down, and finger press the seam. And I'll show you how easy it will be now to, and you can use a bone folder. If you got a bone folder, you can use that. Who am I missing? Hi, Tanya. All right, so now when you do this, you're going to get a nice, perfect, all your fabric is nicely lined out there. you got no duck beaks in here whatsoever. So just bring this down a little bit. Push one of the seam, push the seam whatever way you want. and go this way, that way, it don't matter. It's going to all go one way anyways, but I like to just do this because it's, it's going to make it a lot easier when you go to flatten it open. See? Perfect. I'm going to do it on all four sides. Like that. And just push it. It just, like, a, you can use your bone folder, honestly. It works just the same way this thing does. And then just push it out. It's perfect. So, of course, we have an opening somewhere here, right there. So, I'm going to do this. Still take this. And I want to make sure that that is a quarter inch on each side, so I don't have any bubbles sticking out on there, because you're probably going to see that part. Hi, Marina! Oh, low battery on what? my iPad. I gotta find the cord. It's plugged in somewhere down there. All right, so let's see how my seam is gonna look. Ooh, that looks pretty good. What color is it? White. It's that one right there, Patsy. That skinny one, right beside that plastic bin. I'm sure it is. It's got a big cute. Yep, that's her. Thank you. Yep. I'm just gonna plug my iPad in because I don't want it to die. Can't you enlarge your ladder ring? That's plugged in. Enlarge this? Yeah. I don't know how to do that. Like you would on a computer, go up to your tools. Or no, whatever. but you got to move because i got to iron this. Did it plug in? I don't know. Yeah, it's got the Z, so that means it's charging. Okay, you just need a second to get out. It's hard for me. All right. So let's give, you got to go and give this whole thing a nice, nice press. Okay? Press it all nice. So I'm just going to do that very quickly. I'm not going to bring my ironing board down here. You guys don't need to see me how to iron this square, really. It doesn't take rocket science to iron a square. But you want to get it nice and flat and making it look pretty. Okay. Okay, I think that looks really pretty. Nice and flattened and all my wrinkles are gone. Hey. Tracy, hi hon. Oh, that's great news, Tracy. She overslept, went too long for food as she is diabetic. Her sugar levels were low and she had a high blood pressure. Well, I mean, it's not good, but it's good that she didn't have a stroke, hon. Oh, my goodness. That's good. Okay. So, this is my inside. This is my outside. I like this color for the outside because it's dark. It, that's dark, too. That would be nice for the outside. Maybe we'll have this on the outside. Yeah. Okay. So, I'm getting a marking tool. One that you're going to be able to see on this backing, okay, on this one here. And I need to get nothing else. I need to move shit. Now, this is important. So, these blocks end up being almost nine and a half inches once they're, they're sewed and flipped out. They should be nine and a half inches. So, first of all, you want to find your little hole. 
right here is my hole. Okay, you're going to take your hot glue and you're going to very, very carefully put glue in there that it does not seep out. So be careful, you don't just gob glue on the edge here and then it's going to all come out. So just put a little line, a bead of glue. That's it, that's all you need. Okay, touch it down, touch it down. and keep it flat. So now that is sealed. See? You can't open this. It's sealed. All right. Next, what you're going to do is you're going to put this on your, your ruler or on your, your mat, whatever it is. I'm going to go with my lines that are on here. So I'm counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So nine and a little bit. So what you want to do is find the very center of your, so this would mean it's four and a half. If you put it like here, it's going to be four and a half. So on, you want to have an inch on each side of your half mark. So don't put a half mark, put a mark there and a mark there. So that is, you want to leave one inch and this inch is for this part right here. Okay. This part here, you want to leave this part untouched. So now that you've marked your inch lines, you're going to move over here and you're going to mark inch here and an inch here. Then you're going to go on to this side and you're going to mark an inch here and an inch there. Flip your square and do this on all four sides. So here's my half mark. Where, well, the half mark is in the middle of this one inch. So I have an inch here. So here's my half mark of my square. So now go to the one side, mark an inch. Go to the next side, mark an inch. Go over on this side, mark off an inch, mark off an inch. Like that. Flip it again. Do it on this side. Look for your center right here and find that center inch right there. And that's going to be really hard for me to see. So let me get my darker marker and let me mark this with my purple. And this is uh, disappearing ink. So if I don't work with it quick, it disappears. So there, and now I need it for this dark spot and there. Over here, you're going to mark an inch here and an inch here. Flip your your uh, square, center it, mark your inch in the center, inch on this side, inch on this side. I'm not going to see that. Actually I'm going to use the blue because this is heat resistant or heat removal or the little bit of water. So I'm going to mark that with the blue because my purple is already disappearing here and I need to see this. This is dried out. What good is that tool? Where's my top tin? Here, Tin Tin, where are you? Oh, it's over here. Just a minute, I need a different marking tool. So I need to be able to see Try this one. Okay, so oh, there we go. Wow, that seems like more than an inch. Nope. All right, so I can see that, and I can see that, and I can see all those, and I can see all those. Where was I marking this? Mark there. Mark there. Okay, so blue there. So make sure you, oh there, that's where I didn't get marked. This side. I knew I was missing some. Make sure you have one, two, three, four, five, six markings, all inch increments. Okay. You have six markings on each side. Now this is the hard part. And this is the part I'm going to try really hard to show you. Really, really hard. 
So you decide what you side you want for front and what you side you want for back. So I'm using this for my, my outside. This is my inside. So you're going to start. You're not going to touch your marks here. These are just guides. Okay, these are your guides. You're going to take these two marks, and this is where you're going to do this fancy fold. So you're going to take this first one, and I'm going to press... I'm going to put a finger mark in it just beside that mark. Can you see it? Just beside it. See, I'm not on the mark. I'm right beside it to my right. Now you're going to bring this mark here. So see this blue mark there? You're going to fold that this way, and you're going to go right on that mark. And you're going to make sure when you bring this, this fold, you're going to bring it to the center. So you want to try and center it with your point and you don't want to go past your, your marking here. So you can see where it kind of, it goes a little bit in, but that's okay. You don't want to go, you don't want it to go way over here. You want to make sure that fold is there and this fold is in the center. Okay. So you want to do that. And then you're going to stick a clip, or oh, I need a pin for this. Where's my pins? Right here. I forgot about my pins. So you're going to stick a pin in there. So I'm just going to take this, and I'm going to pin it. I don't want this to move now, because this is perfect where it is. You're going to do the same thing over here. Here's my inch center mark. You're going to pick this one up, and you're going to have this little mark you're going to fold beside the mark, not on the mark, beside the mark, right there. And you're going to bring this one to the center as well. And you're going to line these two pieces up. And they should be equal. On See, there's my blue mark. There's where the fold is. So I'm not going to go into this side, and I'm not going to go into this inch side. Okay, so you're going to do that. And you're going to hold it. So this is what it's going to look like basically on the outside like this. So I'm going to remove this pin now that I've got that side done. I'm going to pick this up in my fingers and I'm going to hold it down here. I'm holding it down here tight. I'm going to pick up my glue gun. I'm going to shove some glue in there, shove some glue behind, shove some glue in there, and shove some glue in there. And I'm just going to pinch this, make sure it's all lined up, nice and even, and I'm going to press. Okay? You can see my joint here. It's matching right along here. It's perfect. Now, when you put your glue on this flat part, you put glue on this edge and only stay a quarter of an inch away from the edge of your triangle. So make a triangle of glue, but stay a quarter of an inch away from your edge and then you take this piece and you fold it down very carefully making sure your corners are whoops are tucked in and this point lines up with your line here so that's tucked in there nice and give it a press and I got a little bit of glue on that but I got it right off so now you have this see I know it's really difficult really really difficult the first try at doing this you're going to have confusion a little bit of confusion i did too okay so now we've done that so when we push this bottom out there's your there's your little there's your little place to stuff stuff because the bottom spreads out that's how it's supposed to look so let's go to the next one remember here you're going to fold this, but you're going to fold beside the mark. I'm beside the mark. And you're going to just take this here, and you're going to bring it to the center, trying to line it up with this here. So there's one. So I'm lining it up with my point. Grab this one here. Fold it beside your mark. The reason you don't go on your mark is that's going to bring you over into the inch. So instead of doing eighths, I'm just showing you it this way. 
and then you match it up here and make sure your seams are all the same in in here so this one goes a wee bit over but that's okay it's not you're not going to have these absolute perfect so make sure this is all lined up nice pick this up in your hand hold it down here leave this little part open so you can put glue in there without getting burnt squeeze some glue in there in behind and in between and then just give it a little press don't if you put too much glue it's going to ooze out <clears throat> and then press it down so you like that i put too much glue but it's okay because it's going to get covered with this so when you put the glue on here drag it across here from a quarter of an inch away make a little triangle inside you don't have to glue that whole flap down <clears throat> and bring it down careful don't burn yourself push this up so that's flush that's flush and that's met with your your seam like this and give it a little press and there's your second your second one whoops I need to hold that a bit more so there's one side done hi Mary it's kind of like origami it is I agree it is like it okay so you're going to move on over and if you don't trust that glue because that glue still feels very hot to me put a clip or two on it while you move on to the next one so we're here with our inch this is our inch space remember you have to have an inch between so you're going to pick up this one you're going to fold it right beside right beside your mark and then you're going to take it bring it into the middle like so and then you're going to do the same thing over here fold it here use your one hand to hold it down bring this up here so it's they're nice and straight and you're not over your inch mark here so it looks just like that see they meet and you want these to meet you want those two seams to join here and you kind of want them to be in the center with this so now you're going to pick this up you're going to drop some glue in there in between you need to put it in between and behind okay and then just press it very carefully press it in place and kind of hold it then put your glue on very carefully i want to show you this in the camera so you can see Put glue here across don't go to the edge and make a V and just shove some glue in there and then dab your gun off and then bring this over pinch it there make sure it's flat there and it's centered and there you go that one's done so I just put a couple of clips on this and then I move along so we'll take the clips off here now because this one has hardened and there's your your third one done okay so let's do the last one here so we'll do this together again there's our inch mark between here so you take the next one you're working with these last two you pinch it beside it hold it up bring it to the center make sure these seams here line up flush with each other like that and bring it to the middle like that okay so keep these as flush together as you can it's a bit difficult but you can do it and then fold that one there and then bring this one flush to there like so and there there's my one inches in here so you know I'm not much past that at all then you're gonna pick it up squeeze it down here so you don't get burnt with glue put some glue in there glue in there you don't have to go crazy with the glue believe me these don't let go keep it nice and flat press it run your glue here along this edge make a V a triangle <clears throat> hold those together bring that 
down, that down, and it's centered. <coughs> and bring this down a little bit more here. And put a couple of clips on it and let it harden. And then take these off. So now I have my cute, absolutely darling, stiff little bowl that I could fill with clips or whatever. Look at how much clips that holds too. And these last a long time because the first one I made is one that I glued as well. And it's holding up beautifully. So I'm just going to put some little ribbons or bows or decorations or anything you want on there. And there you go. It's done. Hardened. Ready to be decorated. You can put lace around it. I'm not going to get into that fancy kind of stuff. I'm, I'm happy with just this. And what a cute bowl. Absolutely darling. And that's all there is to this. Oh, Nan has to go. What did Tanya say? Oh, I would love one, but the only sewing I do is to fix hubby's crotch in his pants after you rip out the zipper, right? <laughs> All right. So, let's do, let's make one that has, you have no sewing machine and you want to make some of these bowls. So, let me just put this back in here because I need to still decorate the outside of this so I am going to put all of these up for sale because I don't need all of them and some people might not be able to make these they are they are challenging and I'm telling you it took me a while to get all these seams to be perfected that's why I made this one yesterday you can see it's not quite an inch I couldn't remember how to make it so I had to make one last night and take all these measurements and make sure I made it right. So this one, and they're different sizes because they're different fabrics. And every fabric has its own, they're all 10 inch squares. So, all right, so we're gonna put that off to the side. We're gonna need that. Let me grab two 10 inch squares so you guys can see how this works. So I'm gonna grab a pink one and this blue one and I'm going to use this for interfacing because I don't feel like getting up and cutting out and interfacing I'm going to pretend that's my interfacing okay and I'm just going to trim it down on all four sides because it is too big to be an interfacing so basically what I want to do is make this nine and a half by nine and a half so it's a ten inch square and I'm not going to cut much with that. So I'm going to cut a half an inch off of this square. So I'm going to measure over here. And it is 10 inches already because I already cut all these into 10 inch squares. So I'm going to take a half an inch off on this side and this side. And then I'm going to have a nine and a half by nine and a half inch square all the way around. Just because I don't want it to be as big as my 10 inch square and actually I can use this for a guide when I'm gluing so if you don't have interfacing just do this trick this will this extra piece of fabric will also stiffen up your bowl so if you don't have it don't fret so let's take this see if I can press that seam out as much as I can probably not without the iron okay and we're gonna put this one on the inside of this like so okay now what you're gonna do is you're gonna start to fold this at a quarter of an inch or you're gonna judge it you don't have to be exact now, you can use your bone folder for this. Patsy, pass me a minute. No, you don't need to. Let's see how my bone folder works. Where are you? Okay. So, pretend that's a quarter of an inch, okay? 
you're going to press it with your bone folder. And you're going to go all the way down and you're just going to press this with your bone folder and pretend you're ironing a seam. You can actually iron it if you want. Go ahead and iron it. And I would iron it before you even put hot glue on it because once you touch that iron to hot glue, it's going to be toast. So if you want to just iron this, it's probably into your best interest that you iron this first because you can't iron it after. Remember that. But this is just to help it along. Now, you're going to go along here and you're going to do all your sides. You're going to fold them in a quarter of an inch. So I'm going to iron this because I'm not going to be able to touch this with my iron after. I'm not ruining my iron either. So let me move my hot glue gun out of the way. Whoops, that's got a white cord touch to it. Move you out of the way. Move all this stuff out of the way. Holy cow. I think I got enough junk here. All right, I got to turn my iron back on. Yeah, I got enough stuff going on. Hey. Okay. Back up. All right. And it's better that you do iron it because once you glue it down, I'm telling you, you will ruin your iron with glue and you won't get it off. Ask me how I know. Go ahead. I dare you. Ask me how I know. Yeah, you're right, because I did that once. I touched hot glue with my iron, and that was my Oliso one. And I ruined it, and I couldn't get the hot glue off. So mine just all fell on the floor. Hey. All right, so we are just way too close here now. Way too close. There we go. You guys don't need to see that close for iron ink. Uh, I'm going to run and grab my drink, my water out of the living room while this is heating up. And I'm going to just give all of these a nice little press. And I'm going to lose my quarter inch seam. And it don't matter. It doesn't have to be a perfect quarter inch seam. Because the quarter inch seam police aren't going to be out there checking. Just saying. Oh cool. I'll just buy some. <laughs> you might die die. You better make one. This is no so. Die die. Pay attention. You need to make a few of these. And I know you have fabric kicking around. Don't even get me going. you got to make some die-dye. This iron takes... I'm going to just run and grab my drink. I'm really thirsty. So you guys are stuck with me for a month. couple months. Hey, Patsy, we get to have a soathon. <laughs>
Now, Tia likes to go outside with me only, walking. With what? Me. I gotta always take her out. Hi, Marina. All right, I got my bubble. Coco, get lost. You're not coming up. Nope, nope, no, and no. And no again. So let's give these a nice little iron because you're not gonna do this. Whew, my glass is fogged up. And I'm gonna iron that seam out of this one. All right, this part's crucial. So you want to take right sides. I'm actually gonna trim a little bit more off of this. I want more, because that way, no, because I'm not going to have anything to measure the other one. So you got to do these as close to the same as possible. As close. So let's just fold this up, make it a quarter of an inch, and let's give it a press. And then just go all along your edge. Try to stay even, quarter of an inch. <laughs> Why do I have this ugly hair on me? And do the best you can. Don't stretch your fabric, because it'll stretch. All right, there it is. Nicely fold it under. Open this end up, fold it. Ding, that's hot stuff. And I'm probably going a little bit more than a quarter inch, but that's okay. We're working on a hot glue one, so better to be safe than sorry. And it's easier with a little wider hem anyway. So that's that one. Fold this up. Ooh, that is so hot. This ironing board. Hey, I don't iron either. <laughs> oh, die, die. You are so right, Mary. I am going to smack her with the iron. She's cruising for a bruising. That New Zealand woman, gosh, there's no pleasing her. All right. That is so hot. Like, so hot. Now, if you don't use hot glue, you can use fabric Fabri-Tac as well for this, if you want. Now, we're going to figure out how to do these corners, and it's super easy. Fold one. Hot iron. Hot board. Fold it down. Fold this over. Fold this in a bit, as if you're making an angle. As if you're going to angle your thing and then just fold it up and give it a little press. So keep it all the same. So there's that one. And when you're gluing this, you can kind of tuck it in. So pressing here. Press that in. Fold this over, fold that over, press it. And you're going to tuck it in when you glue it. Sucker is hot. Fold that and fold that. All right. So this one is done and ready to be glued. Okay, so you're gonna you, we're gonna glue these corners down first before anything. So this is what your piece should look like, professionally ironed, and the seams. So I'm gonna give it a press on this side, but I'm just gonna make sure it's laying nice and flat, and it is. All right.
good and sealed because I cannot iron this after. All right, so we'll move him out of the way. Now you're going to do the same thing with this little baby. So you're going to fold it over a quarter of an inch or three-eighths, whatever suits your fancy. Schmancy. And you're going to give it a press. And I'm not even going to bother flipping up that corner. I'm just going to fold it over. Stay with it. That way I don't have to go back to it. Whew, damn it, that's hot. Is this why she doesn't iron? Because I can't say I blame her. And my ironing board. What about my ironing board? I want it. I want an ironing like yours, Ruby. Oh, an ironing board like me. Yeah, go ahead and make one. Super fast, super cheap, super easy. Just go follow Matt on Jordan Fabrics. He teaches you how to make these ironing boards, and they're super easy. And you can go to Home Depot, and you can buy a board exactly cut like this for, like, I don't know, five bucks or less. Or less, yeah, for sure less. Five, six bucks. Just don't buy MDF or chipboard. So this is where the true test comes to see if your things line up. You want to see if these match up as best as you can. Not too perfect. See, it's too big over there and it's too big over here. So we will fix that before we carry on. Line up at least two sides. Fold this up and then bring this up a little bit more. Whoops. So that all your fabrics match and then repress it. Okay, and let's check it. Now it's kind of perfect. So come back over here. I mean, you're not going to get it 100%. Come on, you're gluing the damn thing. And you could see it's overhanging on this side as well. Let's see. It's lined up nicely there. So I'm going to bring it up a little bit more. And I'm going to fold it up. Oh, eighth of an inch. It looks like it's about that much too big. and press it look at that say lovey look at this so now i'm going to give this all a press and then that's going to be it for the pressing now it's time to do some gluing so i'm going to move this turn this off move this over here now you want to use a craft mat of some kind that you don't care you get hot glue on. Whatever you do, don't use your cutting mat because if you overspill glue, it'll ruin your cutting mat. So I'm just getting my old thingamajigger here. This old spellbinder is one and I don't care if I get hot glue on it. And I'm going to get my glue gun prepped and ready. So here's where you want to go to town. So I don't like how these corners are here. So I'm just going to spread this a little bit like so. I'm going to dab a wee bit of glue in there. Whoa, that not that much glue. And I'm going to push that corner in. So when I fold it up, it's going to be nice and square like this one. Okay. Get doing that to all four. See how this one's sticking out? We don't want that. So check this one. You got overhang here. So open it up. Put a little bit of glue in there. Fold it over and move this part over a wee bit. And then fold it up. And then you've got a, a nice even corner. No overhang. Okay. All my corners are doing that, and I'm sure all yours will too. So, I'm going to put a dab of glue there, dab of glue there. 
fold it over kind of like that fold it up so that none of this fabric overhangs on the edge like that <coughs> we got one more to do and you're going to get that if you use the double fabric like i'm using so fold it over push this side over fold it up like so and down and now we're ready to glue it all the way around now before you glue it you want to pin it of course I would pin I would do all four of your corners so glue glue this down with a wee dab bit of glue glue your corners down a little bit match your corners up and glue them down like so see just glue your corners down and I got a thread sticking out. It's just part of the frayed fabric, so I'm just snip that off. So I'm going to take this corner, match it up. See, I don't have any overhang, and I'm going to dab a bit of glue behind this, a bit of glue behind this one, and a little dab of glue here, and then just pinch it like that. And same with this side. Do it to all the corners. Like that. And if you get a little bit of glue overhang, just snip it off. You can't even see it. One more. So a little dab of glue in there, a little dab there, and a little dab in there to keep this end closed. Match those up, and ta-da. So now everything is all nicely glued down in the corners. Perfect. It's so perfect, dye dye. So you could use steam a seam. Steam a seam. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. That's perfect if you have the quarter inch seam of steam. Okay, so here's where you want to be super, uh, super not generous with your glue. Super not. I'm going to go in here and I want to make sure it closes close to the top, but I'm only putting a wee, wee bit of glue. A wee, wee bit. I am not going ballistic with the glue okay i am not going ballistic and don't do that it's stuck seal it or you can use seam tape and iron seam tape on this to seal it shut too because i have i have that seam tape as well okay so you're just going to carry on if you don't have a sewing machine this is the go-to for you. And don't put a big lot of pile of glue because you're going to have way too much bulk in there. There we go. I'm just going to give it a little squish. And this side is completely sealed. Now we're going to seal this side up. you don't go crooked like that I had to pull that I hate these strings it's all sealed and if you want it to be really technical you could put a bit of glue in the middle squish that glue out flatten it so this doesn't shift around on you. There you go. And 
and see I got a little bit of glue coming out of there but hey this is not perfection oops now I really went ballistic there just make sure all your fabric is sealed and again if you get glue on the outside just trim it off you can't see it at all see now I just need a little bit more glue right here where I didn't finish and give that a seal okay so which side next that one's done this one <clears throat> so that's the last side and if I were you I wouldn't iron this if you do put a put a oh what do you call it parchment sheet on top even then I think the hot glue will still go through that so I would be really careful about ironing this now you really don't need to if you did it, did it this way you're not going to need to iron it because once these bowls are made you don't got to iron them anymore and there we go and she is all done now the amount of thickness that I feel in between here it's almost as if <clears throat> I just sewed a seam that's the amount of thickness that's in there so this is of course my outside so let's get this part done move this crazy mat that I don't need right now and where's my measuring tool where did I put it where are you are not my man my marking tool did I put it back I did all right so let's see how our square turned out this is exactly nine inches so you're going to find the two the one inch the center which would be in nine inches would be four and a half so you're going to mark the one inch there then you're going to come over one inch mark and mark Oops, we need to do the other side. You're going to move over one inch, mark one inch, mark one inch. So I've got six marks across that side. Flip it around. Find your center and mark the one inch on each side of your center. One inch, one inch, one inch, one inch. Flip it around. Mark your center. One inch. One inch and this marker removes with water so I have my six markings there and you're going to do it again here one inch so leave this one inch as your centers and then mark one there and one there and then we'll begin the same process we did before so I don't know if you can see me very good yeah you can you're going to take not these two center ones you're going to take this one you're going to bend your fabric beside it and you're going to take this piece and you're going to line it up with the center hoping that this mark here meets this fold over here see this fold here this one here you kind of want it to meet there all right so that's that side's done then you want it centered and I don't think that's quite centered so there that is pick up this side bend it and bring it to the center as well so you've got those two matching here and these two matching here all right so take this fold it over it's a lot easier to work with it like this see that's how it's gonna look got it pick this piece up hold it down here roughly right about there just hold these two seams together that's all you want to do and give it a bit of glue there 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 and then pinch it off 
Make sure these line up, they're straight. That lines up and that lines up in the center. And press. Now take your glue, put it here, across here. Don't go from edge to edge and make a triangle. Stay away from the edge. Grab the tip of this, roll it down, put your fingernail there, push that, push this, and bring this to the center and give it a press, like so. And if you don't like all that sticking up, you can put a dab of glue there and you can press it down. And then we're gonna put a couple of clips here just to hold this while I move on to the next one. Okay, so take that, stay away from that one. You want to take this one, bend it, bring it to the center, basically in line with that peak. So I can move that over a bit. Grab this one here, bend it on the side, and match that up right there. So you've got your inch here and your inch here. Pick it up, holding it here, and gluing it. Now you can sew all this by hand if you want, but you ain't going to catch me sewing all these by hand. That's just not going to happen. And give that a press. Smush that glue in there. And then put some glue here and make a triangle. And I just like to wipe the glue gun off. Bring this down. Watch your fingers though. That, that, and press. And then you hold it down with some clips. So now this side is all done. See? All done. Get the glue off. Move along here. Ugh, I got glue on me and I can't stand that. So there's my center. So I want to have at least an inch between each corner. So take that, fold it here on that line, and just bring it up to the, fold it in half, and bring it to the center. Grab this one here, fold it on that side, and bring it to the center, like that. Ta-da! Pick it up, hold it here, and give it some glue. How did you get off with the Dr. Ruby? I hope everything went well. Um... This is not stiff. I'm telling you, even with the, I'm only using very little glue, guys. If you saturate this in hot glue, then yeah, you're going to have a hunk of hard nothing. Don't, you don't have to use a lot of glue. You really don't. So I'm just holding this down like that, pressing it, giving it some glue here. I swear to you, this is not a hard mess. Bring that tip down. Keep your fingernail here to hold that. And down here to hold that and pull it. And then press. And we'll just use these two clips. Like so. Jeff! Can you bring me a little bit of water so I can get rid of these blue marks in a cup, like a little tiny cup? This is actually really pretty, but it's not as, it's not hard at all, guys. Honest to God, I wish you could feel this. It's not hard. <coughs> Tracy, I'm off work for a while. Doctor put me off. Okay. So here, this last one is a little challenging. So you want to line this up here. Take your mark, bend it there. Oops. And line it up there as best as you can in the center. And then pick it up. Make sure these two are lining up. 
and that's lining up there. Hold it here in the center. Martha. Yeah. Here. What? More. Oh, just put it on the table because I got heart glue here. And give that a squish and a squish and a squish. And sometimes it helps just push it down on the table. It's a lot easier to work with. And I need a glue stick. So let's put some glue here. Pull this over. Pull that tight. Pull that tight. Give it a squish. Put your clips on it. And bam. Now you see my hot, my blue marks? I just need to stick my finger on some water and drop some water on these blue marks. And they're gone. These disappear with water. Now if you touch that blue with the iron, it's permanent. So you want to get rid of them before you hit it with an iron. I just don't want to get rid of these because you can see them. And that's that. They're gone. So, that's give me a piece of paper towel beside you right there. See it? Yeah. I kind of saturated these. Thank you. Oh, Ouch. Okay, so I'm just going to dampen this and then I'll show you that the blue marks have disappeared. And these two here are done. Look it, I got glue on my good bag. And there you go. This one is made with hot glue. Not a single piece of thread stitched in this bag. And there is absolutely nothing wrong with this. It is beautiful. It's sturdy. I'm pulling on it. You're not going to pull this apart once you've glued it. So let's put our clips in there. Bang it down because it spreads out at the bottom. That's what those little pleats will do. They'll spread out and they'll give you lots of room in this little bowl. Look at this. And I never put an ounce of thread in this. So if you don't have a sewing machine, you can make yourself a ton of these pretty bowls. Really and truly. So, Pat, pull open that drawer, the top, second one. This? Right be the next one over. Next one. That one. Careful, because it's full of little... Those things. And let's decorate our bowls. I'm just going to put some pretty little little beads on them. Not beads, these flat backs. Pearls on them. I'm not going to get too fancy. And I'm just going to give them a little decoration just to make them pretty. While they're in your craft room. You can put buttons on them. You can put a safety pin on it. Make it look like it's a safety pin, Tim Holtz safety pins. Okay, I need to get wiping those. And you can make hundreds of these in a day. Like I just made two of them in an hour. One was glued. All glued. So how do you guys like that? Die dye, how many are you going to make? Be honest, you have to give this a try. Look it. How cute is that? Decorate it up, just put a little pearl on it. Putsy, in that drawer over there. Remember the last night, the bottom left? Yes? Yep. Give me a package of those. I don't need them. One, one that are open? Yeah, sure. How many? Lots. Four of the same color. I want white. Here, just give them to me because I gotta snap them. I gotta cut them. Are those all white? I'm gonna decorate there. the darker one need more. with these, but I'm gonna snip off those um, brads and we'll decorate that with a different. Here, Patsy. I'll put this on my 
What is it? A paper clip. Yeah. Oh. Put them back. Yeah. So I'm just going to pull these up and snip them. Because you don't need these on your uh, decoration. You can decorate them with whatever. Hi, Kathy. I will, LOL. Yeah, watch Dai Dai when they're her next live video. She's going to have 10 of these made and show everybody them. <laughs> and her desk will be so pretty and so organized. I just know it. I can feel it. I can feel the Dai Dai coming on. Hold on, Kathy. <laughs> okay, one more. You want to keep these for when you need to test your sewing machine? I'm throwing them out. Oh, I have a ton. No, I don't need testers. All right, let's glue these little babies on. Oops. On this one. Jeez Louise. This one's going to take a wee bit more glue because they have no brads on them. So there we go. Probably a good idea to decorate them before you fill them. <laughs> Hi, Edith. I am slopping in a lot of glue because they're hollow. And one more. So there we go. Our cute little look at different sizes. The pink one's a little bit smaller because again this one ended up a little smaller because we used bigger things. But nothing wrong with all these little thingamajiggers. Look at all of these. That's a sewed one, and this is a glued one. And you can never tell that I glued this. Not one bit. The only reason you're going to know it's glued is because you watch this live video. Other than that, you're not going to, you can't see sewing here and you can't see glue here. So <laughs> look at how darling. So that's that. I love it. I really do. I think these are the bomb. And these are something really pretty to just put all over your craft room, stuff things in them. It just makes your craft room look pretty. I really like these. Purple one's my favorite so far. I love this one too. I love this color. Purple, teal, green, aqua, gold, metallic. See how cute? So pretty. Patsy, that one's for you. The glued one. Okay. Can you tell that's glued? No. <laughs> no. You can't? No. What are you putting in it? I haven't figured it out yet. I got an idea. Give me a tin. Give me your pin cushion. Okay, hey, let's check this I out. I like my pin cushion. Give me your pin cushion. Well, I want to see it. Oh, shut up. See if it fits in here. She likes her pin cushion. Well, there you go. You can even put your dang pin cushion in these. They fit perfectly in the corners. Oh my gosh. These are Patsy. You're going to love that like that. She's going to take it out. Why? Because you're not going to like it. You're going to take this out. No, I like I'm the just... pin cushion because that thing inside sharpens the pins. Yeah, well, I'm not taking your pins out. And I like the look of my pin cushion. All right, okay. 
That's good. Um, give me one for yours, please. Um, what do you do with the bent pin? I don't know. I haven't pulled them all out. Oh, you can't have that. I'm going to put that in with the dead ones. All right. So there, I dressed up her pin cushion. Look at that. <laughs> Super cute. It's cute. Yeah, she can't have this. This is major bent. I didn't pull them all out. I have a spot right in here for bent pins and broken needles. They all gotta go in a plastic tube or into Tia's diabetic needle thing. Syringe container. Yep, or a syringe container just so you're protected from the needles. So that's that. That is the fun of our tutorial. There's the one I made last night. Another metallic one with all my pins in it, needles. No, it's all pins. It's all my different size pins. She told me about it. And that, those are so darn cute. And these bowl cozies, I don't really like them. Okay. I really don't want to waste any more fabric making these. Maybe you want to put your thing in here. What thing? I have to top stitch all around it to close yeah, this. Yes, I like that one goes with my bag you made me. What are you going to do with this? Oh, I'll figure it out. <laughs> She'll figure it out. It goes with my bag. I, I gotta love sew that. it. I love this. Okay. No. The material. Put those back in she, there. She's going after me with scissors. No, put them in there. Patsy, you're making it sound like I'm some kind of killer. I am a killer. Don't push me. No, I'm not. Here, this has to go back in there. Put it this way, though, because I can't find it with that. In here? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, let's not forget about the red and black one. But this does not fit or hold a bowl. This really does not. I already tried to put a cereal bowl in it. It doesn't even hold it. And that's usually what they we would eat soup in or... You guys don't need to pay mine to Patsy. She's a whiner. Isn't this your sewing needle? She'll tell you I'm killing you when I'm not. No, those are darning needles. Oh, darn. Yeah, oh, darn, she says. Oh, darn. All right. Let's top stitch that ugly bowl cozy. Yeah. I didn't even iron it, and it ain't getting ironed. Just ain't going to happen. So, I got to pull it. Stretch it flat. Now it's very, very thick right here. And this here. Close up the seam on it. It is very thick though.
All right. Stop. Whoops. We want you to stop right here. Now, this is where I turned it. So I got to keep this nice and flatted. top stitched and the hole is closed up. There. A, a bowl cozy, hey? What? Yeah, it is pretty thick. There's two layers of batting in here because you're supposed to be able to feel, not feel, the heat through it supposed to be able to uh, hold your bowl like this you can find a bowl small enough to fit in there then all the power to you but that's too small it's probably for those cup soups soup cup or whatever you call it yeah probably but it is really thick it's cute but it's just not something that's going to be feasible for me and I'd have to make them bigger it's a pain in the butt. You gotta wash them. So what? Won't they go out of shape? No, I quilted it. Oh. See, it's quilted. Oh. I had to quilt both each one individually. Yeah, it is like a bowl. <laughs> Here, go turn it inside out, cause I know that's what you're gonna do. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm not making anything now. You like those bowls, Nan? I don't. And they're too work, too much work. These? Yes, these are easier. Those ones are not at all. It's been a long day for me. I'll take it. <laughs> uh, of course you will, Nan. <laughs> I am so thirsty and I don't know why. I feel so dehydrated. Yes. So these are all the ones I'm going to be making. I'll show you. I picked out a lot of pretty fabrics. So these two will go together. Those two. And these two will go together. Let me see if I can bring this down more. So, whoa! Didn't want you to see me. There, now we'll get these mixed up. There. So you can see the colors now. That's and I've already got them interfaced. And then these two colors, purple and light teal. And these two colors. So you usually do one dark, one light. And these two colors. Mm. 
then those two. And those two. Here. This is purple with a beige purple color. Here, Ruby, show them what you got. I will. I'm going to show them in a minute. Damn it. I know. That's what I'm done here. It's going to be? Yeah. Holy crap. These two colors. This one. I love these two. <laughs> Welcome back, Deborah. Sucks when you have to have a meeting. These two. These two. This nice dark blue with the light blues. Oh, I'm getting a And those two. These are so pretty. This, These fabrics here are from the Downton Abbey collection. This is from Downton Abbey collection. Oh, there's quite a few in here from Downton Abbey. This one. And this, these two. These two. These two. These two. Those two are for Patsy. This one's Patsy's. The red and the black one. There's that red and black one. These two. I love that combination. Really do. These two with the wolves. And I did this one because this is not a directional one. The wolves are every which way, so I chose this. And this from the same fabric line. Or fox, not wolves. What am I talking about? These are foxes. And these two. And lastly, these two. I'm going to sell them for $15 each, Tanya. One five. $15. I'm going to make them. Then once they're all made, I'll post them in Facebook and number them all. And anybody who wants to buy some that doesn't want to make them with these fabrics is what I'm going to make. So you get to choose from all of these, these bowls. So I will make them and I will be decorating them all with... Um, these pearls and the other pearls. This one and this kind of pearls. So I'll be decorating them. with. It's a, if it's more of a rustic color kind of fabric, I'm going to use that. If it's a pretty fabric like that, I'm going to use those ones. And I might put some bows on some of them if I can have the time to make those bows. Because I make, I hand make all my bows. So those take a while to make. And they're frustrating when they don't turn out. Do you take credit card? <laughs> How would I take a credit or debit? I can't. I'm in Canada, Nan. I'm Canadian. I can only take PayPal. Hey. PayPal or, yeah, I can only take PayPal from the U.S. So I'm going to make them. I'm going to work on them this weekend. So let me show you. I got my last quilt kit in today. I'm so excited for um, the Christmas sales because I went shopping on, okay, I bought a quilt kit on, um, whatchamacallit, 
You guys have it. It's your holiday. Black Friday. Um, Black Friday, I got... I got a deal, and I showed you guys that quilt kit I got. And then at Christmas Day, I went to Shabby Fabrics, and they had a sale on their kits, quilt kits. And I grabbed one because they're quite expensive to buy them just like outright. They're quite pricey for a quilt kit. So I was like, I'll wait till they go on sale because I am not going to pay that kind of price for one quilt kit. Even though the fabrics are gorgeous, I'm still not going to pay that. So <clears throat> let me show you what I got in the mail. So this is the backing. It's purple, of course. Look at this backing. It's hard to see the purple, but this is five yards of this beautiful cotton fabric. And it is, um, Debbie Beeves for Maywood Studio. Beautiful purple fabric with the yellow the green the light purples in it it's just stunning so this is the backing to my quilt that's gives you an indication of what it is okay now and I mean when you order these fabric kits they're really generous with the fabrics and I know they give you a little bit more than what you <clears throat> require I just used regular cotton fabric Kathy just regular cotton fabric in here was a vintage blessing wall hanging it says our free gift to you from shabby fabrics and this pattern is in here and inside the pattern, this package, there's even templates to cut out all your pumpkin for a wall hanging. Is that not freaking adorable? So this was a free gift, and I'm quite impressed. <clears throat> so. Let me show you. It's called Star Garden by Shabby Fabrics. Yeah. There is a better picture of it. I think it's on this page. Where is it? I thought I saw a better picture of it. Okay, that's the pattern. Here we go. Let me see. This what I put in it. My headset when I come in here. My Bluetooth. That's the quilt right there. So that's the pattern. I can't show their their cuttings for this because it's a paid for pattern and I could get into trouble. So I'm just showing you that. <clears throat> Okay, so this is the, the beautiful quilt. It's got the binding, and there's the binding in there. It's all blues and, or blues, it's all purples and light limey green, I think that is, like a lime green, light, like a green green, and light purples. And this is all the fabric that came in it. So... <clears throat> On the back of the pattern, it shows the required materials, Star Garden. So if you go to Shabby Fabrics and type in Star Garden and see if that pattern comes up for free, great. If not, it requires all of these fabrics, and all of these fabrics are in this back package. So we have this fabric, which is the backing. This is part of the quilt. I don't know where it goes. 
We have that fabric, beautiful purple. Another purple. I love that green. Now I'm not a green lover. <clears throat> this here is the main part of the quilt. So this will be all of the, um, this part here is all that. Then there's this. Such pretty pansies. It's all pansies. This is a really dark purple with black. I don't know yet. You can see it. It looks blue in the monitor, but it's really rich purple. It's a rich purple with the black. This is pretty too, this green. I just love this green. Love the color. And this is the outer border. It's so pretty. It says right on it. Cocoa. Cut down the length of the fabric, outer border. <clears throat> so not the width of the fabric, they want you to cut it the length of the fabric. So that's no problem. So that's all the fabrics that came in this, and this is quite a bit of fabric, believe me. Like this here is two and a half yards. It sure feels like more than two and a half yards. That's a lot of fabric in there. See? It's pretty thick. And then the little ones. So yeah, this is um, <clears throat> this is so pretty. Is this the same size bag? Nope, I put it in the wrong bag. There we go. I'm tired. I did not sleep good last night because I was, I don't know, fussing about one of the doctors. And who knows? So that's that. Absolutely stunning, stunning quilt kit. And I love that all the fabrics are picked right out for you. Everything. You don't have to fuss over what kept, what you need for the border, what you need for the binding, and none of that shit. It's all done for you. Ready to go. Ready to be sewed. Yes, ma'am. That's it. That's all she wrote. I think I'm going to be going to bed early tonight. I'm really tired. I'm exhausted. But I didn't want to let you guys down, so I wanted to come on and show you how to make that. Oh, and I found out there's a Juki dealer here in Thunder Bay. I'm so excited. That can repair sewing machines. How cool is that? And he repairs the Kenmores. He said he works on a lot of Kenmores. He sells Jukies. I am so thrilled to have someone that can ever fix my machine if it breaks down. Oh my gosh. That's a relief. So I'm going to get going, guys. I'm a little bit tired tonight. It's been a really long day, so... I'll be glad when this day's over. And tomorrow, oh, 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 sorry, and tomorrow I'm going to work on my mini album. That's what I'm going to do, kick Patsy over here. <laughs> and work on this mini album that I got the cover done, sort of, half done. I think the glue is pretty dry. <clears throat> is good and dried yeah this is all nice and dried we can hide that now looks really good but i really think i'm going to put some i don't know we'll see 
I hate to cover up that girl. But, <gasps> I am really tired. Holy man. Yeah, this is all ready to be decorated. Hey. I just love this paper. So we're going to work on this, get it all finished. You guys, you're most welcome. Absolutely, you're welcome. Thank you guys for joining me. And I hope you guys give a go at making these cute little bowls. Because they are a lot of fun to make. You could just go to town on these. They're super easy. Super cute. Make them as big as you want. Just cut your square bigger. That's all. And you're interfacing. Always cut it a half inch around. So, half inch, half inch on both sides. And then iron it down. Or you could put another piece of fabric in like I did. Or you can glue it. I showed you both ways. So, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I can't stop yawning, guys. I'm sorry. I'm going to let you go. God bless. Thank you, everyone, for joining me. I had fun making that. So, we'll see you guys tomorrow, probably. I will be in a lot better state of mind, okay? <laughs> I promise. So, God bless. Bye, everyone.